Chris Griffin has undergone many transformations and has been involved in some unusual relationships over the years. While some were more fulfilling than others, Chris often tends to either become too invested or get taken advantage of. Despite all of the problems he's had with finding romance, he's been one busy guy. Today, we're breaking down the unfortunate love life of Chris Griffin. The first episode that had Chris in a romantic relationship was in season two. Nice to meet you, I love artists. Whoops, a crack in the floor. After a painting Chris made for Peter was bought by an art dealer in New York City as the focus of some of the trending art community. While under Antonio's care, Chris underwent a lot of changes and was set up with Kate Moss. Though Kate appeared nice enough to him, she wasn't much of a support. She was always hindered, spending any time with Chris due to being blown out of windows and slipping through cracks in the floor. We also know online dating isn't an option for him. As we all know, Chris Griffin prefers to maintain a low online profile to avoid being tracked. You can do the same by using NordVPN. NordVPN is a virtual private network which offers threat protection and allows you to block trackers while browsing online, helping you evade online spies and stalkers. Additionally, it automatically scans URLs and blocks any that are malicious. Get NordVPN at nordvpn.com forward slash screen addicts. You can also use NordVPN to easily connect to other regions with just one click and gain access to a wider range of content. This can be especially useful if you're looking to watch shows like Family Guy or other programs on streaming platforms that may not be available in your region. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal here at nordvpn.com forward slash screen addicts. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Chris had much better luck in the following season, at least compared to before anyway. He witnessed an armed robbery had to be put in witness protection and overall struggled with his feelings for Sam. To be fair, much of Chris's problems stemmed from his low confidence when talking to girls. We see earlier in the episode that Chris wound up spraying perfume in the face of a girl he liked. So when Sam was revealed to be a girl, Chris had run away in terror thinking he was bound to screw things up with Sam. When he finally gained the confidence to talk to her, he was found by the armed gunman and then had to return home when everything was resolved. Though Chris had promised to write, Sam wasn't able to read and so the two fell out of touch. In season four, Chris fell for his substitute teacher, Mrs. Lockhart. What do you see here, Chris? Two Ds and an F. This would be the first time a love interest of Chris's proved to be toxic and manipulative. Once a parent-teacher conference confirmed for Mrs. Lockhart that Chris was infatuated with her, she decided to go to Chris's home in the middle of the night and try to use his affection to get her way. Chris, come down here. I need to talk to you. <laughs> In a surprising turn of events, Mrs. Lockhart promised to run away with Chris so long as he killed her husband for her. When Chris refused, she moved on to gaining help from a bear instead. Season 4 was also the beginning of the odd story arc between Chris and Herbert. Just lonely here, thinking about the muscle on paper boy. It began with Herbert passively flirting with an oblivious Chris before he trapped the teen into doing chores for him. Herbert would then up his advances throughout the seasons doing things like hiding in Chris's closet and staring in through the bedroom window. In the 11th season, Herbert tried to get close to Chris through his niece and was a safe haven for Chris when Meg used blackmail to try and make Chris her slave. In season 17, Chris was shown to be a little less oblivious to all the things Herbert did. After Herbert unknowingly fell for a grown man, Peter got all of the special treatment that Chris used to get, resulting in Chris becoming jealous and lashing out. In one of the most recent episodes, this goes even further when Doug mentions that he's also friends with Herbert and Chris makes the statement that he's outlasted everyone and would outlast Doug too. Returning back to season 4, this would also be when Chris started bonding with one of his classmates, Alyssa. After Mae West revealed the Diggum statue, Alyssa and Chris struck up a conversation. Soon after, Alyssa recruited Chris for her Young Republics club. As Chris was being brainwashed by the club members, Brian was on a hunt to get signatures to overturn West's ban on gay marriage. When Chris revealed it was his dog getting the signatures, Alyssa persuaded Chris to burn the petition and in return would let Chris touch her breast. The very last episodes of the season showed the Griffin family in the future. It was here that viewers were introduced to Vanessa, Chris's unpleasant and demanding wife. Sorry, we're late. Stop apologizing. You sound like a woman. Uh -huh. She berated Chris constantly always yelling at him for apologizing, stating he wasn't a man, and demanding Chris put his parents in a home so she could have the house. In season 6, Chris wound up falling for the receptionist at the vet's office. The relationship began on great footing, 
However, when Peter saw Chris offer to clean up a drink Anna had spilled, Peter began to force his misogynistic views onto his son. Chris, being naive, followed his father's advice and began treating Anna horribly, leading to her leaving him. The following season found Chris paired up with the school's most popular girl, Connie D'Amico. She had decided to be with Chris by making it a challenge for herself. She would turn him into one of the most popular kids at the high school. Though she didn't hide her true motivations from Chris, he didn't care about becoming more popular. He stated plainly he just enjoyed being with Connie. Having been used in many of her previous relationships, Connie began to actually fall for Chris. Unfortunately, this did not stop her plan from succeeding. Chris did become very popular, and soon it all went to his head. Once again, Chris's inability to think for himself led to him destroying a relationship. A few episodes later, while lost out in the woods, Chris revealed to Stewie that he had developed a crush on another girl at his school, Ellen. Yeah, she's got Down syndrome. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Stewie encouraged the potential relationship and convinced Chris to talk to her. When Ellen accepted, Chris then spent the entire evening being coached on how to dress and be manly in order to impress Ellen. Now, Ellen asking to have her chair pulled out was fine enough considering the type of restaurant they were in. But soon, Ellen became more and more demanding, pushing Chris to the edge. After being betrayed by Ellen and dealing with her constant complaints, he finally stated that they were done. It was the first time Chris really ended a relationship on his own terms. Season 9 was the start of another twisted arc, as Halloween on Spooner Street was the first time Chris hooked up with his sister Meg. Chris? Meg? In their defense, neither of them knew that they were messing around with their sibling. So the first time, while appalling, makes some sense. However, their relationship didn't stop. Throughout the series, they were revealed to be playing doctoring together and showering together. Season 11 found Chris in two different relationships, but neither lasted long. The first was with Sandy, Herbert's niece, who was only visiting town for a short time. The second was with Amanda Barrington, who Chris struck out with after Peter and Carter were kicked out of the club. Later on in the season, Chris wound up dating Pam, Jerome's daughter. Unfortunately, not much time was given to Pam and Chris with the two of them dealing with Jerome being uncomfortable with the possibility of Pam being used and Peter taking up the role of facing Jerome. This episode would have meant more if Chris and Jerome had a heart to heart rather than Peter taking the reins, especially since Peter tends to be offensive and clueless. The next person Chris dated wasn't one of his peers or relatives, but instead someone he created himself. He had stolen various items around the neighborhood and then used them to create a giant doll he named Heather. Though she wasn't sentient, Chris treated Heather amazingly, to the point where Lois became jealous and stabbed the doll out in the middle of the woods. A couple of seasons later found Chris attempting several different relationships. The first was with Lindsay. Having decided to try and win her over when he noticed how much Lindsay resembled Lois, he had revealed that he thought since Lindsay was similar in appearance, he thought that they would also act like one another and so put up with Lindsay mistreating him and cheating on him. The next person Chris was with treated him a bit better. Eventually, anyway. When Chris asked Taylor Swift to his high school dance, the two got along great. Chris was under the assumption that they were doing well together, already making her gifts, except this would be when Chris found out that she made a song making fun of him. When he confronted Taylor, she confessed that it was what her fans wanted, for her to write about failed relationships. The two had a brief romance until Chris saw for himself how much Taylor's fans hated hearing her singing happy songs, and he responded by dumping her so she could save her career. This season ended with Chris meeting Isabella. After meeting at the water park, Chris asked her out, stating he didn't mind her being a single mother. The two got along well, and Chris brushed aside Lois's concern, about Chris stepping into a relationship with someone who has kids. When Isabella came to him in the middle of the night, explaining she was being deported, Chris decided to take care of her sons. He did fairly well considering his age and lack of experience, but Lois still insisted they go to Mexico to take Isabella's children to her. Seeing the condition of the village, Lois caved and then changed the plan, instead insisting they would smuggle Isabella back into the US. While walking through the desert, the group was ambushed by a pack of wolves, and Chris proved just how dedicated he was to protecting Isabella and her sons. He placed himself between them and the wolf, getting attacked in the process. In the end, Chris decided that he wasn't prepared for parenthood, and he and Isabella went their separate ways. Finally, we've come to Chris's girlfriend in season 20, Jenny Fair. Now, since we never really got to see her for more than a glimpse, we can only rely on what Chris stated about her. 
from how Chris gushed about her, Jenny Fair was a respectful and sweet young lady who truly cared about Chris. Given the long distance between them, Chris was unable to see her in person. That is until Peter, in a jealous rage meant to expose Chris as a liar, took Chris up to Canada himself. When they pulled up outside of her home, Chris made the call to lie about her and tell Peter what he wanted to hear, that the entire relationship was a fabrication. This was then followed by Chris quickly texting Jennifer to explain what happened, to which she responded quickly that she understood. In episode 20 of season 20, Jersey Brio, Chris develops a crush on a new girl named Heather. When he learns that the school theatre is putting on a production of Romeo and Juliet, he decides to audition for the role of Romeo in the hopes of getting a chance to kiss Heather. However, with Stewie's assistance in his acting, things go horribly wrong. Stewie's strict direction causes Heather to quit the production, but it ultimately brings out Chris's raw emotions and captivates the audience with his heartfelt speech. Forces conspire to extinguish love's light. What was your favorite relationship that Chris was in? We are the Screen Addicts, addicted to the screen as much as you.